Hello everyone, hope all of you are doing well. In today's session, we will be continuing with our series on MEG 11, American novel. Prior to this, I have completed a particular American novel, The Last of the Mohicans, a narrative of 1757 by James Fenimore Cooper. In case if you have not watched that video, I highly recommend that you go ahead and watch that video so that you understand this series. And if you are preparing for MEG 11, this will be a perfect start for you. So the link of that video is given in the description in the playlist. So do consider to watch it. In today's ses session, we will be discussing about another American novel, which is actually a very popular American urban novel. And the name of the novel is Sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser. Also do hit the like button so that we can reach a wider audience and do consider to join our Facebook page and our Facebook group so that we stay connected because up there we update all the regular notifications of IGNO and relevant documents and PDFs of our lectures on a regular basis. Now without wasting any further time let's start with the video. Now the major highlight of this novel Sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser is that it was published in 1900 and it actually displays the, the main theme of this particular novel is actually misguided and misdirected American dreams which even though at that uh, pinnacle of its fulfillment does not give you the you know that doesn't give you the satisfaction and the gratification that you are seeking for because we know that American dream means a lot for the American people and Theodore Dreiser has very beautifully penned it down and the criticism that he has given in this novel in order for the pursuit of this American dream is very exemplary and in this particular novel we see particularly two characters that is Caroline Mieber who is a very poor girl and eventually she rises to her success but again all those events that takes place in her uh, journey has been very beautifully written so we'll be understanding this entire novel from her perspective and also another character is there that is George Hurstwood so he was a rich person but unfortunately by the end of this novel you'll realize that he was he became he destroyed his life and he became very poor so the setup of the novel is in August 1889 where we see a girl Caroline Mieber who makes a journey from Columbia City to Chicago to in order to fulfill her American dreams but while she is making the journey she is very much scared she is filled with tears fears and regrets because she has been doing it for the very first time and she is very much unsecure with the uncertainties that will be presented in the big city now while she was traveling on the train she meets a very handsome young traveling salesman named Charles Drute and at the first she was a little bit shy but she could understand that this particular person was an epitome of success, wealth and influence. So eventually what happens is that both of them breaks a conversation and they are very comfortable with each other and when they reach Chicago she and Charles Drott decide that they will meet again the following week so that he can show her the entire city. Now when Caroline Mieber who will be known as Carrie in this novel reaches the station that is the Chicago station she is received by Minnie Hansen that's her sister. Now both of the girls travel back to their flat where Minnie Hansen lives with her husband Swan and the baby and both of them decide that means the Minnie Hansen and her husband decide that they will be allowing to uh, they will be allowing Carrie to stay in their flat only on one ex, uh, condition that Carrie will be paying her own rent. So you can see that all those family bondages are uh, not applicable here where we let our relatives stay without paying anything. It's totally professional here because Minnie and Sven are not that much economically established. So they think that they will find Carrie as a reason as a tool to reduce some of their expenses. Now we see that Carrie is very much excited and thrilled to be in Chicago for the very first time as it happens with all of us when we go to a new place we are very much thrilled with the unknowing prospects the good things that will be coming on our way but eventually her hopes and her all the ambitions was uh, you know it was diffused for a certain period of time because she was forced to work in a shoe factory all right only for a meager salary of four and a half dollars a week. Now at this part of the novel we also realize that the actual ambition of Carrie that is Caroline Mieber is to work in a theater okay she wants to become an actress but this particular idea was strongly opposed by her sister Minnie Hansen and Sven and they give a very logical argument behind this because after paying the rent of four dollars 
carry will be left with no money for the car fare okay because we know that the journey to become uh, to be a part of the entertainment industry is quite gruesome and for that you need to have some money with you so they disapproved of this idea and what happens is that the flat was so small that carry was even unable to invite trout to visit her so some time passes by and the winter sets in and Carrie finds herself in a very uncomfortable situation because we know that in the western countries the winter is very gruesome and it is very difficult to live by because you will need some warm clothes all the time and some warm environment but that doesn't happen with Carrie and she was forced to leave her job okay because with a combination of long hours hard work and inadequate clothing Carrie became ill so she lost her job the Hansons also tried to perceive uh, persuade her to leave and to go back to Columbia City but she refuses because she was determined to stay in Chicago so after losing her job one day she was wandering around in downtown and she finds Charles drought on her way so Charles offers her a good meal and also gives her some warm clothes along with some money that is $20 for her uh, expenses and he also offers Caroline to leave her sister's place and actually take a different rented apartment actually there was an offer in disguise that means he actually was offering her to stay with him in a different apartment in a flat which eventually she accepts okay so as time passes Carrie also perceives that drought is not nearly as an idle figure as she has first imagined he she discovered that he was egoistical and insensitive but at the same time you can't disagree that he was quite kind and generous okay because he has been helping Carrie right from the beginning now one evening this particular young couple was visited by George Hurstwood George Hurstwood was happened to be a friend of droughts and he was also a manager of way up truly swell saloon okay so he was very mature and attractive and he finds Carrie very naive and pretty and the both all immediately started to have a connection okay and they both were fascinated by each other and they started to meet frequently whenever the salesman that is Charles Trout was out of town in the meantime we also see that without Carrie's knowledge Trout enlists her talent as an actress in an amateur performance that means in a theater all right so to the surprise of Carrie as well as her two admirers the girl was a brilliant success so here we see a particular talent of Carrie that she has that innate talent in her to be an actress as in her first performance itself she was a success so the next day her student confessed her his love for Carrie and Carrie responded favorably but wait a minute because there is a big twist coming on so the twist was that that actually George Hurstwood is already married and he had a very shrewd and selfish woman who accused Hurstwood of having an affair which was actually true in fact because Hurstwood was having an affair with Carrie even though Carrie was not aware that Hurstwood was married so he, that woman the uh, wife of Hurstwood actually initiates a divorce against Hurstwood okay and here we also see that drought was also not very comfortable with the relationship uh, of Carrie and Hurstwood and he once moves out of the flat in order to frighten her now the next part of the novel is the part where the turning point of this particular novel takes place because what happens is that at one night while George Hurstwood was working in his office what happens is that he was able to notice that a particular safe was open and where he could find $10,000 so even though there was a hint of hesitation in him but he eventually steals the money and after stealing the money he was so scared that he immediately went to Carrie okay he immediately went to Caroline Meeber's home and he actually gives a false information that drought has been insured and wishes to see her and he what he does is that he takes her away with him on a train to Canada that means that was the actual plan of George Hurstwood to steal the money and to take Carrie along with him to Canada because they want to he wants to settle there okay with the stolen money now at this point we also notice that Carrie discovers that her student is married and she, she is repelled and she is very much angry by this fact but again her student argues that he has left his wife in order to be with Carrie now she believes it because she has already left with her student to Canada and agrees to remain with him if he will marry her again at the same time when they reach Canada what happens is that her student has been tracked down by a PI that is a private detective and he was forced to return most of the money from which he has stolen on the promise that his employers will not prosecute 
Now, after that, what happens is that the couple marries, okay, in a very hasty manner. And although the marriage is not valid because George Hurstwood is already married and uh, his wife has already initiated a divorce, but they were not divorced actually, okay. So the marriage of George Hurstwood with Caroline Meber was not legally valid. Now, after the hasty marriage, what we see is that a couple starts to live in New York, actually, where they find themselves a comfortable apartment. And Hurstwood, whatever money he was left out, he starts a second-rate saloon. Okay, so eventually we will see that his uh, business will fade away and he will be left with nothing. So they, he and Carrie were left in a very routine existing in New York, never going out or meeting anyone. Now, as we have already seen that Carrie is a very ambitious and a very independent girl and eventually she was growing a dissatisfaction inside of her of our routine life and this was triggered by her friendship with her neighbor mrs vance a very young lady of fine manners and expensive taste through the influence of mrs vance and her cousin bob ames carrie begins to feel dissatisfied with being an ordinary housewife now at this point of the time as i have mentioned what we see is that her stood business his second rate saloon was not running well and his entire business venture terminates okay and he finds himself out of employment he gives a try for some time but he couldn't find any job and after some time he just stops looking for a particular job okay and he just sits and doesn't leaves his home and he just watches his meager savings dwindle so eventually what happens is that he loses all his pride and dignity and even hardly leaves the house conditions become so difficult that carrie has to carrie was forced to find a work in order to run the family all right and uh, she actually finds a job as a chorus girl in the broadway opera so as i have already mentioned that carrie was has an innate talent in theater her fortune rises steadily after that okay and after that what happens is that carrie decides to leave her stood on his own for he has become a date that wait on her so the story follows after a few years where we see that Carrie gains all the fame and fortune she wanted for and she was longing for and she got all the things that she wanted in the beginning and what happened to George Hurstwood is that he actually lost all his fortune and he finally commits suicide. So at the time of Hurstwood's suicide, Carrie has gained all that she has originally hoped for. She has got wealth, finally prestige. Nevertheless, she remains unsatisfied, always pondering the vagaries of fortune that make her desire something new and indefinable. It is clear that she will never gain the happiness she dreams of. So this is the video guys. I hope you got an insight regarding this novel. That is the Sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser because this novel is beyond a particular story. It's more about realism and that makes it the most popular urban American novel. Okay. In the history of America, of course. And there is a reason why this story is so much realistic. And Theodore has tried to show a mirror to these readers about the American dream. That how the American dream is so much superficial when it comes to fulfillment. All right. And how the costs and sacrifices that a person gives in order to reach this particular dream does not ensure happiness. So if in case if you have any other doubt regarding this particular novel, do feel free to comment in the comment section. I'll definitely try to address it. Till we meet next time, God bless you and thank you all.